theCUBE. We're here at HP for the special coverage, SiliconANGLE.TV's exclusive coverage of Project Moonshot, which is a comprehensive architecture around technology, low power. We heard from a true or false question, instrumental to cloud, true. Absolutely cloud computing is about data centers at the end of the day. It's about systems level view. It's about power. It's about everything. I said, John, they're one big ATM, right? <laughs> <laughs> Cha-ching, man. I'm telling you, man, you know, this is, this is like that, what's the analogy of the frog sits in boiling water and then the, the water boils and they, they boil to death? That's the enterprise. I mean, these data center guys, power is, they always had power. But it's the Facebooks, it's the Amazons who know that power, they're screwed if it, go, if, if it is not factored into the equation. So, the, you know, web companies that have web presence, critical that they have a power and efficiency program. So are we doing news now? Okay. All right, great. So um, let's see. So uh, uh, I don't know what's going on in the news. Mark, you want to come in here? and? Uh, well, let's just first talk about where we are. We are yeah. here at Hewlett Packard's famous Building One in Palo Alto, California, my hometown where I live now. And uh, Building One is the original headquarters on Page Mill Road, and it's the place where the founders had their offices. Bill Hewlett and Dave Packard behind me is Bill Hewlett's office. Behind Dave Vellante is Dave Packard's office. And this is where the magic happened. This is where they did their business. This is the history of HP. Um, they actually have doors on their office, and uh, it's an open-door policy here. And uh, the CEO, John Young, at one point would sit right where we are in the cubicle open bullpen here in the cube farm. But they, this is the office, they got a walkway in between the two founders' offices and obviously a restroom in there. Um, they collaborated. Bill and Dave did their magic here, built their company. Founders of Silicon Valley uh, did this here. So it's very historic uh, that we're yeah, here. Yeah, uh, John, as you know, this used to be a big open field, right? It was farmland, really, Silicon Valley back in the 70s. Right? They we're at the a, top of the hill right now. This, yeah. is the, this is like the top of the hill on Page Mill Road, looking down. And then Sand Hill Road became the shadow of Page Mill, which is that's where all the venture capitalists are. And, and uh, obviously, Bill Hewlett and Dave Packard from Stanford University, uh, famous story. Um, really, the birthplace of Silicon Valley was because of the garage on Addison Avenue, which is uh, in Palo Alto. They moved to Page Mill Road, and then ultimately when they started growing, this was their first big building, and building one. So we're here covering HP's special event, Moonshot, is their architecture, and it is about, um, they call it the HP Shapes the Future of Extreme Low Energy Server Technology, HP Server and Infrastructure Innovations, Advanced Computing at Massive Scale. They talk about hyperscale pr uh, processing, which is essentially uh, hyperscale data centers, things like Facebook, Amazon, those big data centers they call Web 2.0 companies, which is really more web applications. These are environments, Dave, where they own the stack, as they mentioned. And it's also where the, the elements of processing needs to be managed, where you can turn off cores on and off, and that's going to require some programmability. It's not going to be static, uh, and they need to have that kind of capability. And also open source. We heard from the folks here at HP that said if you're doing open source programming, you're really not compiling. It's really runtime and our interpretive software, and you can run on any platform. So in those workloads and use cases, this technology is superior to anything on the marketplace, uh, according to HP. Well, it's interesting. You know, we were at Oracle Open World oh, about a month ago, I guess, and uh, we were doing a, a segment on the, 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 the new data center, data center, the high-performance data center, and we, we put up a slide at the time that showed all the horses on the track. Obviously, x86 was in the lead, and you had, you know, uh, you know Itanium and Oracle Spark and, and IBM uh, 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 Risk. But on there, David Floyer actually had us put ARM. And his point was, you know, we had a little foal as the, the analogy. His point was ARM is definitely going to come into the data center. Here we are a month later talking about ARM, uh, Calzada, low power, low energy uh, yeah. uh, chips. Yeah, David Floyer has made a lot of right calls over the years. And, uh, you know, I love going back on the wiki at wikibon.org and looking at some of his earlier mm. uh, research. And um, if you guys aren't following David Floyer out there at Wikibon, you got to follow his work. He's amazing. He's got his hand on the pulse. Um, and he's on the cube all the time when he's in, in, in the office. We, we get him on. And at Intel, at the Oracle Open World, that interview was fantastic. And we actually had Intel in the hot seat. And they, I don't even think they knew they were in the hot seat. So it was interesting to hear them talk about Adam. And, and you had a comment. We asked them about ARM. And, 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 what, what, and Pauline's what, what, response what's, what's your take on the whole Intel situation? Well, so we asked Pauline specifically about Adam, you, or, or, or rather ARM. Do you think you know, ARM is going to you know, challenge you in the data center? She says, well, we have Adam, was her response. Now, 
We're here at HP today. Um, we, we, Intel's not here, although Adam is on the roadmap. HP's been, you know, very careful to make that clear. But let's face it, John, this is the starting team. <laughs> Put your the best team, team, the the team, team that team. could be on the field. Intel doesn't have their helmet on yet. You know, <laughs> putting their, their cleats on and tying their shoes. Yeah, uh, so, uh, yeah, so <laughs> it's ARM. Today on. it's ARM. It's, yeah. it's, it's Calzada. It's the ecosystem around them. Intel's clearly playing Intel. Intel's got to be embarrassed. I mean, if I'm at Intel right now, i got to be like, this is, this is weak. You know, if I'm Paul Odolini, i got to whip some people around. Oh, that's saying, a big announcement. The, HP, the number one there. server vendor. 97% saying, hey, market share. I mean, come on. We're going to lead and, 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 and lead this trend toward low power. We've all seen this coming. Uh, it's, it's, this, is not, this is not new. It's not freaking people out like it's came out of the blue. I mean, people have been talking about low power in the data center for a long, long time now. Um, now we're starting to see products that are real. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, really I think different. Intel's going to have their act together pretty quickly. I mean, my guess, and again, this is just my guess. I have no inside information. Uh, don't talk to many people over Intel other than some of the data center folks we talk to. Um, but that, this is an area they've been working on. I mean, well, this is core to them. The question for Intel is, as Pat Gelsinger said, ex-Intel executive on the Cube at VMworld, if you're not out in front of the, the next wave, you're going to be driftwood. So the question for Intel is, can they move outside the x86 into more of a robust programmable system level view of the data center? If they can, they'll be successful. If they try to hold on and clutch on to the old ways, they are going to be driftwood. So it would be very interesting to see the Intel response around Adam and some other things, Dave. So, John, some, some news real quick here. Uh, I see Solid Fire did a raise, another $25 million, uh, bringing the total up to $37 million. And, and interestingly, uh, a few angels that they had involved in Frank Slootman, who was the, f the former CEO of Data Domain, and his VP of Worldwide Sales, David Schneider, and then Greg Papadopoulos, who was the CTO at Sun, all put dough in, and then NEA and Valhalla. Yeah, I'm really disappointed by those guys not asking me if I, I want to John. kick in I mean, some it's, cash it's, on that deal. I mean, solid state is on fire, solid fire, you know, <laughs> pun intended. Solid Fire, great company. Um, obviously, the founder. Well, clearly, an up round. You were saying off camera, right? Yeah, we had a briefing with them. There's an up round, although there's no out, new outside investors institutionally. It's NEA and and uh, Charles Curran over at Valhalla, two great firms, really hot in the storage area. Up round and valuation. Obviously, the demand for Solid State is putting these guys in a great position. The service provider business on the web based companies, uh, Solid Fire, is selling directly into that environment. And that's a key point. I mean, there's a lot of action right now going on in the in the the, the solid state space. Obviously, we've been tracking Fusion IO and the IPO for a long time. Um, and, and but what's different about SolidFire is they're exclusively targeting the cloud service provider, and the cloud service provider has d a different requirements. And the SolidFire strategy is to bring uh, to that cloud service provider the ability to pin quality of service by application. That means they can start charging for it. That's different. I'm a big believer in the cloud service provider business model, and I was a little bit skeptical at first, but as I start to look at it, and from my view is, when you hear about these types of announcements from HP, it ties directly into the solid fire value proposition, which is you're going to see a new breed of provider who can put it all together. You're seeing a couple trends. Obviously, software as a service, we all know about. Platform as a service has been hot. We saw Cloud Foundry and those guys doing some stuff. Infrastructure as a service, which is essentially converged networking. When you add, like, the HP story of converged networking, it simplifies the programmer's life. You add open source on top of that, you're going to see some really creative entrepreneurs cobble together some really high commercial-grade applications that are going to be cloud-specific. What the use cases are will be determined by the entrepreneurs, in my opinion, and the marketplace. So it's still open book in my mind, so we'll see. I mean, I, you know, well, I'm, but I'm bullish on it. Well, you I see. think what, what this announcement says is it's, it's, it's basically solidified saying, look, we're going to put all of our $37 million into that cloud service space. So, so, so for those of you thinking about getting into the space, you know, you might want to rethink it. Now, of course, guys like EMC with Project Lightning are going to get into that space. But uh, uh, some of the smaller guys, you know, may, maybe that's a message to them to rethink it. Uh, again, the big guys, well, Solid EMC, Fire is in a perfect position, Dave. I mean, here, you know, like you and I were talking about off camera, they're perfect position on the racetrack because either way, they can go it alone, go public and, and dominate the market and build an ecosystem around them and their partnerships, or they can get bought out at a very, very high number. So I don't think that they're selling. I mean, my take on the company is it's not built for a flip. It's built to build a viable business. Uh, the founder is uh, from Rackspace. He knows that business cold. But what's going to be interesting is the ecosystem that develops around the cloud service. I think there's going to be some consolidation. And you're going to see a lot of people become service providers within that space. So it's going to be some interesting consolidation. But either way, it's a growing market.
Yeah, well, Dave Wright is, came from Rackspace. That's his, that's his deal. He's a smart guy. Uh, Colorado-based company, one that we're following, a, a, along with others. Pure Storage, um, uh, Nimbus is another one that we're tracking. I mentioned Fusion IO. So it's, a, it's the hot space. It really is. Um, okay, so... Uh, we are here at HP Labs, our... We're at Cube, the Cube, the flagship telecast. This is SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv's exclusive coverage. Come to our site. Wikibon.org is the research group. They have all the research covered there. We got the publishing. We got the data at SiliconAngle, the reference point for innovation. We are here at the historic founder's office of Hewlett Packard. Bill Hewlett, Dave Packard behind us. Some of the stories that Silicon Angle is following today, uh, female CEOs on the rise. Uh, we're, t- we, we're talking about, uh, so there's two really, uh, G- Ginny Ramati and obviously Meg Whitman. We're here at HP. T- the two largest computer companies are now run by women. Um, I've met uh, G- Ginny Ramati, uh, Virginia Ramati, uh, a couple times. Uh, Jay Shru Ulal, Arista. Arista. We uh, love Arista Networks. Uh, and uh, so we're starting to see the rise there. So Silicon Angle has a story on that. Uh, we got a story on Solid Fire. Yahoo cashes out of $270 million out of its ad network, and a, and a board member refuses a CEO job. Nobody wants to be CEO of Yahoo, John. I do, I do in a second. Guys, <laughs> I will turn that ship around. I will come in there and be the CEO of Yahoo in a New York minute. I'll be there. It would be so easy to turn them around. they got 50 million unique viewers every day. It's a no-brainer, guys. Come on. Just get, get out of your own way. Yahoo needs some serious help. They have assets. Um, they just kind of like blind right now. And then this came in, uh, stories, Jeff Kelly is following Hortonworks. Uh, Jeff Kelly follows uh, big data for Wikibon. Hortonworks takes dead aim at Cloudera uh, with its own fully open Hadoop distribution support and partner program. That's also up on uh, SiliconANGLE. So for those of you who don't know, go to SiliconANGLE.TV. Check out the videos. Go to SiliconANGLE.com. Check out Services Angle, which is our newest publication. Uh, check out Wikibon.org, which is the, the research uh, publication. If you've got questions, we've got answers. Or send us a, an IM uh, or, or a, tw- a, a, a tweet. I'm at D. Vellante. John is at Furrier. Yeah, um, we have some new writers, too, on the Silicon Angle team for a few months now. Uh, Alex Williams uh, started in June, and Clint Finley started in uh, September. Both Alex and Clint came from Read, Write, Web and are covering the enterprise uh, IT as a service uh, part of Silicon Angle and all the innovation around that, cloud developers, uh, and, and mainly headlining a new vertical publication that we launched called Services Angle. ServicesAngle.com is the dedicated publication to the services business. Web services, platform as a service, customer support, social media, all the things that are going on as in the services of IT. IT as a service is the future. You're seeing all the technology here at HP. Talk about that and uh, come visit servicesangle.com.